Hello guys, welcome to the next lecture on the applied multivariate statistics. Today, I will explain you how you can derive the maximum likelihood estimators for this multivariate normal distribution. Myself, Dr. Harishkar, you can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of the applied multivariate statistics. And you can see in this playlist, you can find the various lectures related to the multivariate normal distributions and its various characteristics. You can see the last lecture was on the distribution of the quadratic form, characteristics, functions, and many more here. You can follow my YouTube channel so that you can get the various lecture in a very simple manner for your study. So what is the objective of this lecture? We will see how you can derive or how you can calculate the maximum likelihood estimators of these parameters mu and sigma. This notation, this is my multivariate normal distribution where mu is called as the mean vector and sigma is my covariance matrix. If you want to find more detail about the multivariate normal distribution, you can follow my this lecture at available at my YouTube channel so that you can get details about this concept. We also derive what is the probability density function of this multivariate normal distribution and that is defined by this man. The, the derivation of this lecture is also given in this lecture. Remember that this P, this P is called as dimension of the multivariate normal distribution. If I simply take P is my 1, so that is called as a univariate distribution. If I take P is equal to 2, that we call as a bivariate distribution. And whenever P is more than 2, then we call as a multivariate normal distribution. Now, what is the objective is, as if X follows my multivariate normal distribution with the two parameter mu and sigma, I call this is my population. Now, since mu and sigma are coming from the population, so that means our target is to estimate them. How you can find the estimators corresponding to the mu and sigma? Definitely, for the estimator, we need a samples. Fine. So for the samples, I can consider the x1, x2 and xn, where xn must be greater than of the dimension of this normal distribution. Then your target is to find the estimators of mu that is a mean vector and find the estimator of the covariance matrix. The derivation is a very, very simple. Uh, you can see uh, in this lecture, it's a very simple and very logically proof is given to you. You can subscribe my YouTube channel so that you can get the more lectures in advance. What is given to you? X is my multivariate normal distribution. So by the previous lecture, we have defined the probability density functions this manner. Now, since this sample x i, i varies from 1 to n are my independents. So once they are independent, can you define the likelihood function? The likelihood function is i varies from 1 to n of each function density. So this is the definition of the likelihood function. Now I can substitute this f of x i at this point. What is my L? Because this is the product varies from i. And in this component, it is independent of i. So it is multiplied by n times so n p by 2. And this is determinant of this quantity. What is the product of this? You all know what is the product of minus of a x i. If you take the product, it will be minus a summation of x i. So a is my constant that is e raised to power minus half summation of this quantity. Now, based on this, we have to find the log likelihood function. Otherwise, it is difficult to differentiate this capital L. So, what is my log of L? What is the property of the log 1 over x? It is my minus of log x. Fine. So, it is minus. Now, what is the log of a raised to power x? It is x times log of a. I can return this is minus np over 2 log of 2 pi. It is also in the denominator. So minus n over 2 log of this quantity and this value will be my minus half of this value because log of e raised to power x will be my x number. Now remember that this number is my determinant of positive covariance matrix sigma. Then how you can define how you can define the MLE of mu? 
very simple by the definition we have to take the partial derivative with respect to mu and equate them to be zero now clearly say this quantity what is the derivative of mu with respect to is a zero because it is independent of mu this quantity again it is independent of mu so this value will again be the zero now the only thing we needed is to how you can differentiate this value fine so for that you must remember that if i simply take say w w transpose a w this is the same quantity it is equal to 2 a w if if it satisfy the two properties first one is if a is my symmetric fine and second is a is independent of w fine independent of w then you can simply write the derivative with respect to w is my here if you look about that the first number is minus 0 minus 0 minus of half clearly say what is my a in this case a is my sigma inverse and sigma is always my symmetric matrix so the first property is satisfied also this value is independent of mu fine independent of w because we need to find the mu so this factor is independent of mu so i can use this result if mu or if w does not depends upon the a that's satisfied and a is satisfied also so i can substitute this value this case that means it's a twice a is my this quantity w will be my x minus mu so i can substitute this number mu will be cancel out sigma inverse i can put as a outside then it will be i varies from 1 to n xi minus mu is 0 clear now since sigma is my positive definite matrix fine so what does it means sigma will be greater than 0 so that means inverse will never be 0 so that implies summation of xi minus mu will be 0 i varies from 1 to n so if i open this bracket i varies from 1 to n xi minus n of mu is my zero because it's a summation i so can you find the value of mu mu will be summation of xi divided by n and you know what is that this is nothing but my sample mean so therefore mle of this mu is my sample mean and you can see a proof is given to you very simple two or three lines second part how you can find the covariance matrix that is my sigma how you can find the mle of sigma so again your target is to differentiate this function with respect to sigma clearly say this is independent of this it is a zero this part it is not a zero but you all knows how you can differentiate this with respect to log x it is 1 over x and then you can differentiate this so that could be easy for you but you can see we need the differentiation with respect to sigma but here this is my sigma inverse so that means how you can differentiate this quantity how you can differentiate this with respect to sigma that is a most important task challenging task fine so it means i need to firstly simplify this quantity fine and that how you can simplify this is a very very simple you can see what is the dimension of this sigma inverse is a p cross p what is the dimension of this it is my p cross 1 what is the dimension of this transpose this transpose will be my 1 cross p so what does it means this is my if you multiply them it is my 1 cross 1 matrix what does the meaning of the 1 cross 1 matrix that means it is my scalar number fine it can be 7 it can be minus 1 it can be anything so therefore what will happen if it is a scalar number if i say if alpha is my scalar so can you correlate them with the trace because if it is a scalar number then alpha and the trace are same thing so i can return this number is trace again i can use the property that trace of ab which is equal to trace of ba we all know this property so i can consider this value as my a and this number is my b so therefore this is my trace of xi minus mu this is my b and this is my a 
so i can substitute this value i can substitute this value at this point so summation i varies from 1 to n trace of this quantity fine now we all know how you can use the trace of a plus b which is trace of a plus trace of b and you can see this right hand side i can written as i varies from 1 to n trace of a i if i say a1 a2 so i can see you can see so this value i can put traces outside and summation is inside now this value is my independent of i fine so i i call this quantity to be my capital s and that s is a, again a symmetric matrix so this trace s sigma inverse i can substitute this value in this formula so that comes to be minus np log 2 pi minus half i can take as a common n log sigma plus trace of s into sigma inverse remember s is my symmetric matrix now we can differentiate this with respect to sigma so what will happen the first value will be zero then it's a minus half n will be outside partial derivative with respect to sigma log of this plus partial derivative with respect to sigma of this trace value now how you can differentiate this value again by using the simple two results i can use minus half will be zero and what is the result is if you take the partial derivative of any quantity which is written the log of determinant this is the determinant then it comes to be a inverse transpose or transpose inverse so i can use this is sigma transpose inverse by using this property again for this case which is similar of this quantity if you compare them a will be my s x will be my sigma and b will be my identity fine so if i use this property then it's come to be minus x x is my sigma b is my identity this b is my i a is my s x inverse is my sigma inverse of transpose is come to be g fine now since sigma is a covariance matrix which is a positive definite and symmetric so once it's a symmetric what does it mean sigma transpose is my sigma so this first number i can return this is sigma inverse also also we know s is my symmetric matrix fine sigma is my symmetric matrix so what does it mean sigma inverse s sigma inverse is my symmetric matrix so once it is my symmetric you can write or we can use this property a b transpose is b transpose a transpose so you can see i can return this quantity as sigma inverse transpose s transpose sigma inverse transpose fine now since s is my symmetric so this value will be my s this is sigma is symmetric so i can return this number is my sigma inverse and this value is again my sigma inverse that means this number is similar now i can post multiply by sigma inverse so it comes to be minus sigma inverse of s to be zero or i can put this on the right hand side it comes to be here i can pre multiply by sigma on the both side it is my identity so can you find the value of this covariance matrix s over n fine now what is the value of the s as we know s is come to be this number but remember this mu is my population mean but we are using the estimator so i have to find the value of this mu fine and we all know what is the mle of mu mle of mu is my x bar so either you can substitute directly or we all know this is the result for any so i can take b is equal to mu in this result so this number will be my x bar minus mu and what is the mle of the mu mu is my x bar this is the mle of mu so that means this value will be zero so once this number will be zero by taking b is equal to mu this number is nothing but my 
this quantity. So that means s is my xi minus x bar. Substitute this value of s, we will get the MLE of this. And this is called as the sample covariance matrix. Remember, this is called as sample covariance matrix. So what is the summary of this is? That means if you have the multivariate normal distribution, then the MLE will be my x bar and MLE of the sigma is my sample covariance matrix. Now I will explain this result with the help of the numerical example. I hope you can like my video as you will see it is a useful for you. Let x be the multivariate normal distribution with that dimension p, fine, and a random size of 5 that means x1, x2, x3, x4 and x5. These are my sam random samples x1, x2, x3, x4 and x5. Then what is the dimension of the p because these are the three columns. So that means p is my 3. Fine. Clearly say n is my greater than of p. Then your target is to find the MLE of mu. Find the MLE of the covariance matrix. A very simple approach. I will tell you how you can solve them. We know this is the MLE of the mu. Fine. So my because this is the positions. Fine. And these are my x1, x2, x3, x4 and x5 which consists of the three dimension each. Now firstly find the MLE of this. It is a 3 cross 1. It will be my p cross p. Fine. How you can find the first number? That is mu 1. That is my first column average. 9 plus 2 plus 6 plus 5 plus 8 divided by 5. So can you calculate the sum? It's 11, 17, 22, 30 over 5, 6. Similarly, for the second, that is the second column, 12 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 10 over 5, 30, 40, 50, 50 over 5, that is my 10. Similarly, for the third sample, it is my 3, 4, 0, 2, 1 over 5. So 7, 9, 10 over 5, that comes to be 2. And that is the MLE of mu based on the random samples x1, x2, x5. Now, since the dimension is my 3, so this matrix is my P cross P, that is 3 cross 3. So remember, your target is to find these 9 elements. And this is my symmetric matrix. Fine. So that means I now I can find the value of sigma 1, 1. How you find? It's a 5. 1, 1. That is my first column. Fine. First column x bar. This is my x bar. x bar is my mean of the first value, 6. So 9 minus 6, 3. Again, it's a trans because second number is also 1. So this is also 1. So 9 minus 3 plus 2 minus 6 minus 4. 2 minus 6 minus 4. 6 minus 6, 0. 6 minus 6, 0. 5 minus 6 minus 1. 5 minus 6 minus 1. 8 minus 6, 2 and 2. So can you calculate the sum? It is my 9. It is my plus 16, it is my 0, it is my plus 1, it is my 4. So it is a 25, 30, 30 by 5 is 6 is the right answer. Now you can see it's a sigma 1, sigma 2, 1 and 2. That means first column, first and second column and this the first and second column. So first number, 9 minus 6, 3. While for this second case, it's a 12 minus 10 2 because in this case both the values are same so i have used the same number now for the second row second x2 when i is going to 2 2 minus 6 minus 4 8 minus 10 minus of 2 6 minus 6 0 6 minus 10 minus 4 5 minus 6 4 minus 10 
एट माइनस सिक्स टेन माइनस टेन सो दैट कम्स टू बी वन ओवर फाइव इट इज सिक्स प्लस एट प्लस जीरो प्लस सिक्स प्लस जीरो सो दैट कम्स टू बी ट्वेल्व ट्वेंटी बाय फाइव दैट इज माई फोर सिग्मा वन थ्री दैट इज द फर्स्ट कॉलम एंड द थर्ड कॉलम फाइन दैट इज माई फर्स्ट कॉलम एंड द थर्ड कॉलम एंड द वैल्यूज आर माई सिक्स एंड टू इट्स कम टू बी वन ओवर फाइव देन नाइन माइनस सिक्स थ्री थ्री माइनस टू वन टू एंड फोर टू माइनस सिक्स माइनस फोर फोर माइनस टू टू सिक्स एंड जीरो सिक्स माइनस सिक्स जीरो जीरो माइनस टू माइनस ऑफ टू फाइव एंड टू फाइव माइनस सिक्स माइनस वन टू माइनस टू जीरो एट माइनस सिक्स टू वन माइनस टू इज माइनस वन सो इट कम्स टू बी वन ओवर फाइव थ्री माइनस एट प्लस जीरो प्लस जीरो माइनस टू सो इट कम्स टू बी टेन माइनस थ्री माइनस सेवन ओवर फाइव फाइन आई नाउ आई कैन सब्सिट्यूट दिस इज सिक्स दिस इज फोर दिस इज माइनस सेवन ओवर फाइव नाउ योर टारगेट इज टू फाइंड द सिग्मा टू वन बट देर इज नो नीड बिकॉज वी नो दिस मेट्रिक्स इज माई सिमेट्रिक सो वंस दिस मेट्रिक इज सिमेट्रिक दिस नंबर इज ऑल्सो माई फोर दैट मीन्स दिस नंबर इज माई सिग्मा वन टू सिमिलरली This number is my minus seven over five. Now your target is to compute the remaining four values. How you can find the sigma two two one over five two and two that means second column. Fine. And this value is my here. So ten minus two twelve uh, minus ten two and again two eight minus ten minus of two minus of two six minus ten minus four. Minus four, four minus ten, minus six, minus six, and zero and zero. So that comes to be one over five, four plus four plus sixteen plus thirty-six plus zero. So that comes to be. This is my twenty. This is my forty. So that is sixty over five. That is one to twelve. Two and three, second column. third column and this case is second and the third so 12 minus 10 2 3 minus 2 1 next one is 8 and 4 minus of 2 plus of 2 6 minus of 4 minus of 2 4 that is a minus of 6 0 plus 10 minus 10 0 and it's minus 1 So it comes to be one over five plus of two minus of four plus of eight plus zero plus zero. So that comes to be ten by five. That is two. Uh, is a six? Is there any error? It is my plus of eight. It is minus of two. So yes, sorry. It's a minus of two. Minus of two plus eight. It is my six. Similarly, you can find the three and three. That's the third column. It comes to be one over five. Three minus two, one into one. Four minus two, two into two. Zero minus two, minus two into two. Zero into zero, and minus one into minus one. So it is one plus four plus four plus zero plus one. So eight, nine, ten. Ten by five. That comes to be two. So this number is my twelve. This is six over five, and this is my two. Again. Because of the symmetric, this number is my six by five. So hence, the covariance matrix, the MLE of the covariance matrix is this number. Okay, look at this one more example. Find the MLE of the two cross one matrix. That means the multivariate normal distribution having dimension two also, and two cross two covariance matrix. What is the sample size? Is you can see it is my x one. X two, X three, X four. So n is my four. Fine. So your target is to find the MLE of the x size. So since x one, x two, and x three, x four are coming from the normal distribution, so therefore, what is the MLE of mu? 
what is the MLE of the sigma? MLE of the mu is my x bar and it comes to be sample covariance. So again, it is a very simple, it's my 2 cross 1 because p is my 2. Fine. Now, can you find the first column sum? 3, 4, 5, 4 divided by 4. So it comes to be 7, 12, 16 divided by 4, 4. Can you find the second column sum? 6, 4, 7, 7 divided by 4. So 10, 17, 24 divided by 4. That comes to be 6 now. So that means the sample mean the or MLE of the population mean is 4 and 6. For this case, because we need a 2 cross 2 matrix. So let me firstly calculate sigma 1, 1. It is 1 over 4. So 1 and 1, that's the first column with the first sample mean. 3 minus 4, minus 1, 3 minus 4, minus 1. Plus 4 minus 4, 0 into 0. 5 minus 4, 1, 5 minus 4, 1. 4 minus 4, 0, 4 minus 4, 0. So it comes to be 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0. That is 2 by 4, 1 over 2. Can you find the number of the sigma 1, 2? So again, 1 over 4, 1 and 2, first column with the first value, 4, 3 minus 4 minus 1 and 6 minus 6, 0 plus 4 minus 4, 0, 4 minus 6 minus of 2 plus 5 minus 4, 1, 7 minus 6 plus 1, 4 minus 4, 0, 7 minus 6, 1. So what is the answer of this? 0, 0, 1, 0. So that is a 1 over 4. Because of the symmetric matrix, this number is also 1 over 4. Fine. And the last number is sigma 2, 2. It's come to be 1 over 4. So second column with the second value, 6 minus 6, 0. Plus 4 minus 6, minus of 2. I can write here. Sigma 2, 2 is a 1 over 4. 0 into 0. Then 4 into 4 minus 6, 4 minus 6. Fine. 4 minus 6, 4 minus 6. 7 and 6, 1, 1. Again, 7 minus 6, 7 minus 6. So 0 plus 4. So 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus divided by 4. So 6 by 4, that comes to be 3 by 2 is the right answer of this problem. So this is the way you can solve this MLE estimators of the multivariate normal distribution. I hope you can like and comment on my video, this video as well. We will see the next lecture, how you can find the sample mean, the, of, how you can find the distribution of the sample mean. Till then, you can like, share and comment on my video. Best of luck students. Happy learning.